This video is sponsored by Polygon. Materials, models, and HDRs designed for architectural rendering. Click the link in the description to find out more. Up until recently, the only way to remove noise from your renders was to let it render longer. But in recent years, denoises have been gaining considerable traction because they've been getting considerably better. So denoises work by using various algorithms to try to intelligently identify the noise in your render and then smooth it out as a post-processing step. Meaning after the render is finished, it'll then do this extra step after it and it'll smooth out uh, the noise. Um, and by the way, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you lots of examples comparing noise reduction, uh, but YouTube's compression is really severe. So I'd encourage you to use the highest playback quality if you can, so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Uh, now, Blender actually came with a denoiser um, about two years ago. It's, it, it's included in there, the default denoiser. And it's obviously better than having nothing, but it's honestly not great. Those that have used it can attest to it. Like if you've got a uniform flat area, it tends to make blotchy patches. And then if you've got texture detail, it's usually overly aggressive and it smooths a lot of that out. And then as well as that, it actually adds a considerable amount to the render time as well. So it's not free, like it's, it adds on to that render time. So it's, it's not ideal, but again, better than nothing. Um, well, late last year, a better alternative was announced by NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA's Optics Denoiser, which is free. Um, it uses AI to identify the noise and it does a much, much better job in almost every situation you can throw at it. Uh, the obvious catch is, of course, you have to have NVIDIA hardware in order to use it, which of course is their plan all along. That's why they built this thing, right? Um, now, Blender doesn't come with optics because the open source license is incompatible with uh, NVIDIA's tech, uh, but Grant Wilkinson generously created this free add-on that brings the optics library in and gets around the license. So basically you download uh, this zip file, go to user preferences, select install from file, then after you enable it, you just click install optics library, uh, which will download something that's about 250 megabytes um, from NVIDIA. You only need to do this once by the way, and then you click save user prefs. Then underneath the default denoiser, you'll see a new one there that says denoise AI denoiser. Now, there are only two options underneath this. Um, so just very quickly, HDR training will work better in low lighting situations, but it can smooth out detail. And then extra passes, I almost always leave checked um, because basically it separates the passes and it will do a much better job at retaining the texture detail while removing the noise from within it. Uh, the only downside to this is that it will override the compositor, meaning you can't do anything else in the compositor. Um, you can only, <laughs> only use that, right? So that's that's the downside. Anyway, after your image is rendered, you hit render, um, you wait just like an extra two seconds, it's really quick, and then the denoiser will kick in and magic will occur. All that noise will have miraculously vanished uh, for seemingly no downside. Like it's really, really impressive. If you've never used it before, you'll be like screaming from the rooftops, the solution is here. Um, so, right, as you can see, like comparing with the, the default Blender denoiser, it created blotchy patches, optics, virtually perfect, consistent smooth areas. Looking at texture, the default denoiser was really overly aggressive and smoothed it out. Optics keeps that detail, provided the extra passes is checked. Uh, the one area that the Blender denoiser is actually superior at is retaining edges. So you can see the cabinets have this razor thin edge there, which has completely vanished in optics. Now this is at an extremely low sample count though, like it's really noisy. Higher sample counts, it's better and it'll find more of those edges, but it's still not great. So if edges are important, you might not want to use optics, but for a lot of subjects, it's honestly fine and you don't notice any problem. So if you haven't figured it out already, the reason that optics will save you so much in render time is because you can use lower sample counts. Without a denoiser for an interior like this, I'd need to be rendering at least 20,000 samples to get something even remotely noise-free, which even with dual 1080 Ti's takes one hour and nine minutes per frame. But with optics, I can get away with just 1500 samples, which renders in under six minutes, which means I've reduced my render times by 95%. 
or another way to say it, it's an improvement of 3,136%, which is crazy. But there is some bad news, and the bad news is it doesn't work very well for animation. The challenge is consistency across frames. If you're just looking at a still image, there can be discrepancies and changes and things that don't match the original thing, but you're not gonna notice because it's a still frame. An animation playing at 30 frames a second or something around then, any changes in the edges or anything like that, little flickering, it's gonna be very noticeable, and it is both with the blender denoiser and the optics denoiser, both of them have this problem. Even with seed change disabled, which is like that little setting in Blender, which when you check it makes makes it so that the, the noise pattern changes on every frame, you always wanna make sure that's unchecked when you're using a denoiser. But even with that unchecked, the problem is still there. It's just every single frame, it tries to perform it as if it's just looking at that one frame and it'll try to understand it. Sometimes you get little artifacts, little blips, little black dots or things that'll appear and it just like, it ruins the animation. So. I honestly can't recommend optics or the Blender default denoiser um, for animations. It's just it's just not quite there yet. Um, Disney and Pixar are so invested in denoisers for animations, obviously, because of their, their movies, um, that they're developing their own in-house solution, which uses a seven frame temporal window to try to remove some of that, that jittering and make it more stable. But so far as I know, this is just in-house tech. It's not available uh, commercially yet. Um, if I had to guess, NVIDIA would probably add something like this to optics at some point, because obviously animations is gonna be valuable to lots and lots of people. Um, the one solution I would recommend for animations um, actually has nothing to do with computer graphics at all. It's the Neat Video plugin, which is for video editors, and it's designed for removing grain from film. Um, but it's so good at removing grain that it's actually one of the best denoises for computer rendering as well. And despite how painfully 2000s the website looks, I can assure you it actually does an amazing job at removing fine grain uh, from your animations. It, it's not very good at like, like if it's a very noisy frame, it doesn't do that very well, but a fine grain, so if you can render it a, like for the kitchen scene, I found like a 3000 sample count, which is still 10 minutes per frame, but uh, the neat video plugin was then able to like remove the rest of the grain really well. Um, it keeps all the detail in the textures, um, and best of all, it has really good consistency across frames. Um, so I use this when I'm doing like a really like high polished photo reel animation, I use that. Um, and I've actually heard Archiviz artists, they use this workflow as well. So that's my workflow. I use, uh, I use that for the high, high stuff, and then I use optics for stills and anything that's non-photo realistic. Um, so I actually used it for the neon tutorial because it wasn't noticeable. Uh, the lighting tutorial, a lot of those examples, they all used optics, and then also the polygon welcome video as well. But I'd love to know what you guys use. Uh, are there any denoises that you would recommend? What have you found that have worked? Any little tips, tricks? Um, I'd love to learn, because I learn by, by reading all the new stuff that's out there. So leave a comment on this video if you've got an idea. Um, and if you're keen to learn other new technologies that are on the way, um, if you haven't already, check out my video on uh, the, uh, the next leap, how AI and neural networks and things will change the future of computer graphics. Um, I presented it last year at the Blender conference. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.